I've seen a lot of hype lately around the ability to run 6S lithium polymer batteries on 4S motors using the Betaflight motor output limit feature. If you take the KV of your desired 6S motor and divide it by the actual 4S motor KV multiplied by 100, not only did you just solve the skill testing question on the back of a Canadian lottery ticket, you get the motor limit to enter in Betaflight. The result should be that Betaflight matches the RPM of the 6S battery on the 4S motor, as if it was a 4S battery. I've considered making the switch on my 3-inch quad and actually own the equivalent 6S motors, but there are very limited 6S battery options, where there are batteries of all sizes in 4S, and sometimes running lighter 450 milliamp hour batteries can be preferable on smaller tight courses where you don't need to punch out much. So keeping diverse 4S options alongside 6S would be great. A lot of us have not made the switch to 6S yet because we have quite a few perfectly healthy 4S batteries we want to keep using, and well, some of us have a shit ton more than that, to the point it might be considered an unhealthy amount of batteries? The point being, the concept is extremely compelling, since a lot of us have quite a bit of 4S hardware, 4S batteries, and theoretically you could run 4S batteries and 6S batteries on the same aircraft with different profiles. I've seen statements made that there is no excuse not to get 6S batteries anymore, and even statements that you should build new 6S rigs on 4S motors, and this seems too good to be tr Where did those come from? I've set up my dynamometer and modified the code to my automated motor testing scripts to run various tests to determine if 6S is really the new 4S. Recursion Labs. For science. The first test spins the motors up to a specified set point RPM. It will take 50 measurements and average them together to calculate the efficiency of the motor at that RPM. So we can compare the differences between 4S and 6S voltages. We will configure the power supply to output 4 volts per cell since the only voltage sag will be the drop from the wiring. So 16 volts for 4S batteries. The RPM set point for this test is 12,000 RPM. For 12,000 RPM on 4S, we measure 40.44 watts, with an efficiency of 4.79 grams of thrust per watt. Now, let's bring the voltage up to 24 volts for 6S and run the same test. This actually makes a decent desk fan. It's quite refreshing. For 12,000 RPM on 6S, we measure 45.41 watts of power, with an efficiency rating of 4.45 grams of thrust per watt. This is a decrease of 0.34 grams of thrust per watt. This is less efficient, by around 7%. Let's see if increasing the voltage makes the motor more responsive. Since we know the ESC values for that RPM, we can quickly instruct the ESC to spin the motor to that set point RPM and back 20 times, and measure the time it takes to spin up the motor to that RPM. <laughs> Averaging out all 20 tests, on 4S we get an average spin up time of 152 milliseconds. Let's repeat on 6S. This makes for a slightly less pleasing fan. On 6S, we get an average spin up time of 153 milliseconds, which means the motor response at lower RPMs are basically the same for both 4S and 6S on 4S motors. Let's try doubling the motor RPM to see if anything changes. Starting with 4S, we are spinning up the motors at 24,000 RPM, or about 75% throttle. We measured 262.36 watts to sustain 24,000 RPM and get an efficiency rating of 2.82 grams of thrust per watt. Now, let's see with 6S. For 24,000 RPM on 6S, we measure 290.56 watts of power, with an efficiency rating of 2.57 grams of thrust per watt. This is an increase of 28.2 watts, and so a decrease of 0.25 grams of thrust per watt. This is again less efficient, by over 9%. I suppose it's time for the thrust tests. <laughs> On 
All right, all right. One thing is conclusive. I have now damaged my hearing by about 30%. On 4S, we get an average spin-up time of 164 milliseconds. Now to do this on 6S, where this time I'll shove some toilet paper in my ear holes. <laughs> Uh, oh, all right. The toilet paper blew out about halfway through. Uh, it sounds like those war scenes where the grenade goes off and all you hear is eee! We also measured the spin-up time of 234 milliseconds. This is now getting worse by about 70 milliseconds. It looks like at higher RPMs, 6S becomes less performant. And this is only about 75% of 4S equivalent maximum thrust. If the motors are less efficient on 6S, where does all that lost energy go? To see that, we'll need to switch to Thermal Vision. I program the dynamometer to spin the motors up to 24,000 RPM and hold that RPM for two seconds, eight times, with two second breaks in between. On 4S, you can see the temperature is rising to an end temperature of a maximum of 60 degrees Celsius. Repeating the same test on 6S, you can see the motor is getting hotter by about 38% to an end temperature of a maximum 83 degrees Celsius. Yes, Celsius, my American friends. I mean, we measure everything else in grams and millimeters after all. Well, except propellers. Regardless, you see where the lost energy is going. So that completes the testing. Running 6S batteries on forest motors is viable, but with a relatively significant loss of efficiency and increase of motor heat. Is this a reasonable option if you've moved to 6S on newer builds and want to use your old forest gear as a backup aircraft? Absolutely. It's better that than not being able to fly. That said, if your motors are already running hot, you might want to be careful. Would I recommend buying 6S batteries specifically to use on forest propulsion systems or forest motors to use with 6S batteries? No, you'd be much better off matching the appropriate motor KV to the battery, which for me is quite unfortunate. Since I have a set of equivalent 4S and 6S motors, would anyone be interested in running similar tests between them? I'm curious of the results and personally think this would be an interesting bench test. Let me know in the comments if you agree. If enough people do, once my hearing comes back, I might give it a go.